Hello and welcome back to, uh, I guess I, I was calling this cutting with devs, but I, I, that just doesn't sound right to me. So I don't know. Caves of Cud with Brian Buckley. <laughs> it's just me. It's not all the devs. It's just Brian. My, well, this is, um, my, so I've done. My opinion certainly is not the same opinion as everybody else on the team. I've done one of these with Narf and, uh, Kaylin so far. Um, I'd like to try and get some of the like even the musician uh, i would love to to do something with but uh oh, I, every every team over is great if you get greg on the horn or, or jason or or the, i know that the mysterious uh, artist sam i'm sure all of them would be hilarious and great on stream i'd i'd, I'd love that i I'm, I'm a little bit conscientious though so i gotta gotta psych myself up to these things <laughs> all right so um let me see here. Outside of an official ending to the story, when will Caves of Cud really feel complete to you? We might have covered some of this, but um, I, this seems more relevant now that there's a 1.0 actually, uh, well, not date, but, you know, like a, a soft kind of announcement. I mean, our our original concept, when, if you would go back to the original forum posts we made about what we plan to do in Caves of Cud, and so what is still in our heads about what the surface area of CUD looks like. We 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 were like, oh, we're gonna have every major faction will have a plot line. And so now, fifteen years later, we're almost done with the first faction's plot line. Right. <laughs> and and so like it's it's clear that our original concept for CUD was was more than we could bite off. And so like I don't know if it will ever feel like we got there with it for me. I think I think 1.0 is an end to a particular you know goal of development but there's there's so much more you know like we had in our original concept of what could could be and I mean we're already bucketing things out into future big patches or DLC or whatever we don't have a strong release plan for how we're actually going to productize that content but we certainly have plenty we could do post 1.0 if that's like a plausible outcome depending on how well launch goes well you're already i mean you've, you've opened up a lot of uh cans there and also closed some up for me here so um that raises a very interesting question for me is um i mean speaking of my initial impression of cud like when i first started playing it uh, it always seemed to me like the, I wouldn't say like the end goal, but like the core thing that you were striving for was the spindle from a story perspective. You know, it's it's there immediately. So did the plan, was the plan always to have the Barathermites like be strongly involved with that? Or is that kind of what, you know, was that developed over time? I mean, it was developed over time. A lot of the concepts that are in the game were 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 there pretty early, um, though not not as well formed as they eventually came. Um, I think the the spindle makes a lot of sense in the context of the Barathrumite quest line. But there's plenty of factions in Cud who have goals completely orthogonal to what's going on at the spindle. Um, like for instance the consortium of Fida. what are they, they they don't seem to care about the spindle at all right what would a what would a quest line that centered around their goals be uh be like what, I feel like, what about uh, it would it would have to be something to do with acquisition something right like yeah. I, we we i mean I, I i know but it won't say some of the things that would be going on in that plot line but i mean i think that that would be an interesting one um, we mentioned water barons, and they they don't have a strong physical presence in the game, but their goals would probably be orthogonal to what's going on in the in the spindle. The wardens don't really care, right? Um, there's there's tons of fac factions that aren't about the the sort of investigation of history in the same kind of way. Most people in the world wouldn't really care, right? Like that's that's nerd stuff. The nerd bears <laughs> are worrying about the spindle and we don't really care. Um <laughs> that ended bear. up being Yeah, like that ended up being the plot we chose for 1.0, in part because that's just where we started. Um I you know I and 
there's there's plenty of other stories going on in Cud. But you know, it's just it's it's such a huge project to to build one of these with the thoroughness that we want in our games. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out my brain is just trying to do a pun with plants being Ferengi and I can't do it. There's something there, no, I'm like, sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> um uh but no, that's so that's like honestly like even if it never happens, even the idea that all of the factions were supposed to have something going on is really interesting um and i mean like i know it's selfish from a player perspective but i would still love to see even like very small quest lines done for them like yeah, that we, would be so would, cool we would love to do it we have we have like other games we want to make too but we also have plenty <laughs> you know plenty unsaid in in cud and it's extended sort of freehold setting you got another the like name, 20 the years of the, I mean, the name of our the name of our studio Freehold is is rooted in the actual world setting of Cud, which was what we were calling the Freehold setting, um, because the setting itself was much more expansive than Cud. Cud was sort of a odd corner of the setting we were building for, originally like a a a four X web game in like two thousand four or something where you would build build these civilizations in this in this sort of post apocalyptic world. Um and only much later when I was building a roguelike engine and Jason was having some some ideas for uh you know like a world in this toxic plateau did those ideas kind of come together the roguelike engine and this idea and our love for games like rifts and gamma world and and then our freehold setting all those all those kind of went into the pot and came out as caves of cud and so cud is just a tiny corner of a little expansive setting which you get a little taste of in some more like the true ken arcologies huh wow that's but there's like quite a lot to explore in that in that larger world right like cud cud is cud is like a a little toxic corner where nerd bears live of this of this much greater world there's stuff going on everywhere on this world and so this is this is just a little particularly mutated corner of of this place it's um like the idea of you know i don't know it's it's you you've given me a spooky idea there the like the idea of like, well, you're finished with Cud and and you're gonna move on to your next project. I mean, I it makes a it makes a lot of sense. I know that uh, like 15 years is a long time to work on anything, um, but that's it's it's just like uh, I don't know. That's that kind of blows my mind. The idea that Cud would just even be like it's it feels too large to be part of something else. If that if that well, like we we built cud and then we stopped for a couple years and made sproggy wood and then came back to cud so this is not that wouldn't be unusual that would that would be typical for us really is to is to is to sort of punctuate cud's development with with other projects though at this point we we may be able to just keep doing cud and other projects right like that that's not out of the question our team isn't huge but it's not not minuscule either right like we have we have a half dozen or more i don't know it's like eight or something part-time um and full-time contributors and so you know and a lot of them are deeply invested in cut right? <laughs> the, the world of cut is is more than just me and jason uh, you know like all, all of those team members have huge, huge chunks of cut and not understand the world and so the way we go forward with cut is a little undefined yet it depends a lot on how well 1.0 goes if interested anybody's interested in funding our next projects and frankly we're just not working on that future yet we're trying to just ship the best cud 1.0 as we can and then figure out what we're going to do um, maybe maybe we should be spending all of our time setting up our the funding for our next project but you know you you only get one chance to land something like a 1.0 in your life and so we're just gonna land it the best we can and, and figure out what comes after at that point uh, very um like 
kind of bluntly lives me, leaves me on uh, what was going to be my next question, which was what will development look like um, to the CUD team post 1.0? Uh, yeah, we don't know. Like, it, it depends on a lot on how well the launch goes. If the launch goes poorly, well, I mean, that's going to be a little bit of a scramble. Um, if the launch goes well, and we... Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's a strange game, right? Like, it's it's it, it, it has sold copies, but over 15 years and eight contributors... That's not a ton of money, right? Like it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty lean business still, um, and it's a very strange game, right? Like there's there's probably a ceiling on the people, even with animations, who can get into this kind of game. I do think it has a long life, right? Like I think every year people are born, they're going to be able to pick up CUD and play it, and I think 15 years from now, people will still be playing CUD um, if there's people around, and so. I think from that perspective, it's it's got long legs commercially. Um, but we, like, I don't think anybody really knows how well Cut is going to perform post 1.0. Like, it, it, it could be like, well, you already sold to all the people who will <laughs> buy Cud, right? Like, right. that's it, right? Everyone's happy you got to 1.0, but now, you know, everybody's also relieved it's over and is moving on to other things. Or maybe a lot of people get excited and play this new kind of game, and I just... I don't think anybody really knows. Yeah, I mean, um, like, you don't have to take my word for it by any means. But, like, I feel like even if you stopped right now, like, if somehow for, you know, some horrible event led Caves of Cud to be abandoned where and y'all had to do your own thing and pay the bills, Caves of Cud would already be considered, like, one of the best RPGs ever made. So, like... It's um, crazy to me. It, like, I, I'm not the only one to say it. Um, like, you know, you can you can find much bigger YouTubers than me say exactly those words. Um, you know, it's it 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 does it triumphs over so many like you know bigger games uh, from a financial perspective, but like it it does. Um, so you know. I think, I mean, you, you only need to see like what kind of press uh, has has been around for like your announcement of uh, Kit Fox um, publishing you. Yeah, I knew this was going to be a mistake. All right, we're not yeah, going to do that. <laughs> I need a I need a ranged weapon. I guess I have a yeah. wooden bow. But like, you know, I, I can't see Caves of Cuds uh, like release um being like short of a of a fairly big celebration and you know i i see what you're saying yeah i mean there's definitely uh um a risk of like you sold it to everyone that wanted it but i don't think that that can be true and i'm gonna die anyway yeah i mean maybe right it's just it's just like i think i think it's such an outlier in so many ways um i don't think any of the metrics that people use to gauge how big a launch is going to be for a normal game work. And so I know I like I know the Dwarf Fortress team was really concerned about how well Dwarf Fortress was going to do. And from the outside, you know, like me and Jason were like, nah, you, you're going to annihilate it. You're going <laughs> to kill it. It's amazing. But really, how well is Dwarf Fortress going to do in the public market? Who knows? Right. Like right. that's a that's a big unknown. They ended up doing incredibly well which is wonderful right love that for them so much um but like i don't i don't think i don't think you can know how well a project like this is going to fare in the large market and you know i hope cud does well in 1.0 i'll be i'll be extremely happy having made it no matter how it goes right like i think like the the result of these many years of work and like the amount of amazing people I've gotten to work with who've contributed to it and just like loved it and played it has been incredibly gratifying. Very lucky to have had that experience in my life. Um, but well, you know, all we all we can do is make 1.0 is the best thing we can make and then let the dice roll. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, I mean, anyone from an outsider perspective would probably consider that to be a very healthy view set um i i i encourage uh, all of you 
um in that I, I like i think it's already a victory i think you you know if, even if you call it 1.0 now and i know you won't that that wouldn't be good enough um from your perspective but it would already be like a success for a lot of people um you know and like door fortress isn't done either right like they 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 don't consider it finished either um yeah. so i i i think um i, I guess I, I i have a lot more optimism um for, for yeah, and I, I wouldn't say we're we're all optimistic like i don't want to paint like a dire picture i think we're all just realistic about the possibilities right like we're we're all very proud of what we made we all think there's a reasonable chance that we'll, we'll you know that we'll have some su success on the on the 1.0 launch whether that means 1.0 is deeply successful or whether that means somebody wants to you know i mean you could imagine you could imagine like a like a four player co-op action game that takes some of these sensibilities and lets you play right like or you know a million other games that would be almost certainly commercially successful um maybe somebody wants to fund something like that that's not anything we're like currently searching for funding but that's an outcome that is is not cud makes 200 million dollars but is still still means we get to make some amazing stuff going forward <laughs> right there's there's plenty of pads forward outside of 1.0 that aren't huge commercial success that are still very good um and i, I think it's most likely that we have a good outcome um, which specific good outcome is is a little up in the air, and of course failure is all, all, you know always an option here. We're in a we're in a very very tough business, right? Games is very tough. We're a tiny little studio. It's 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 brutal. I'm so gonna... we're just trying to be be realistic about about what what it looks like, and I think post 1.0 is a is a big unknown. I'm going to I'm going to pivot slightly and I I I would, I would love an explanation of what just happened here. Uh the animal dies. Uh That's just like a bad spawn, I think. There's there's been farmers hanging out in this uh corn uh horned yeah, chameleon this, layer. This yeah, this layer accidentally rolled a base object, which like in this build was not flagged as a base object properly. So a lot of the systems will inspect rather than hand built tables. A lot of our procedural systems these days pull dynamically from objects based on their their properties, which allows the game to automatically include objects that say come from a mod, right? If right. a mod creates a creature, and our, our procedural systems will look at its whole library of creatures and find creatures that meet certain criteria. And so without having to modify the like some kind of encounter table, if a mod adds a creature, it'll sometimes end up in the game. Um, but there's plenty of creatures in the game's definitions that are like base definitions and not complete creatures. Animals, one of them. It's something that a creature can inherit from. Um, but should be flagged to not be picked up by these dynamic systems. But sometimes that flag gets deleted or, or, or you know, is, is overwritten improperly or whatever. Um, and so in this case, the animal base object um, in this particular build had a bug where it just wasn't properly flagged. We had reorganized some blueprints and just forgot to flag it as a base object. And so it's getting picked up by that those procedural systems and being used as an encounter. Um, the game's robust enough that it works, right? Like it's, <laughs> it, but it's it's not quite right. It doesn't have a name. It doesn't have a description. It's got, you know, it's it's an incomplete template. Uh, all right. So hold on. Uh, would you trade unshelled reptile rep for villagers of the Ezra? Uh, would I personally? Probably. Like. Probably not. I envision Village of Ezra is a pretty niche reputation, and Unshelled Reptile is a pretty big deal if you're yeah. going to end up getting stomped by a assault back or something. I'm trying to hold on. I'm trying to get my faction reputation. I'm just wondering how uh, how horrible that would put me in line with the Villagers of Ezra. Oh, I can do page. Right. Villagers of Ezra. Okay, there I'm, I'm at zero. So being hated is i think negative 200 so it might put me on bad terms with ezra yeah being hated by ezra is pretty bad 
I I think I would probably just um, avoid this completely. Oh, he's got sleepy pow. Uh, what do you call it? Sleepy gas. Sleepy gas. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm leaving here. Um. All right, so. Uh, Dwarf Fortress got some pretty smart shirts and merch when they got published. Can we expect something some similar for Caves of Cut? I want I, honest, I want some new and different have, shirts. I honestly have no idea. I, like, it's definitely it's definitely a possibility, but a lot of that's just what what can like the upside of having Kit Fox is that they decide and do those things, right? Like, I'm not right in the middle of of those considerations, and so. I, I honestly have no idea what, what merch is coming up over the next year, though I, I would expect some. Um, it would make sense to me, but it kind of depends on what Kid Fox and our like marketing partners are going to do. The the new thing, I mean, you know, enamel pins. Sure. Uh, you know, we got to get we got to get cud uh, enamel pins. Maybe um, I've always fancied a uh, uh, a water flask, like a, a, yeah, a water skin flask pin. I'd like that. I like t-shirts. I think like a snapshot plushie would be cute. Yeah, I was going to say plushie. Get on that yeah. plushie meta. See if you get a snapshot plushie or like a Q girl just to upset okay. all the right people. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like a, I don't know, like a <laughs> tape, paper map of the world. The world map's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I, I was actually. I don't um, know. I'm not promising any of these. No, things. I know. I'm I just... know. This is, this is I, I've, I've been playing with the idea for a while of uh, making um, a poster with all of the like you know shortcuts um on, oh on yeah that would be cute. cute like a keyboard template uh, like a caves of cud themed numpad usb numpad oh yeah no that that would be <laughs> uh get like a get with the official razor um <laughs> yeah official razor and a numpad with a with the spindle on it or something it changes color with the, the passing of the day maybe like it says unidentified artifact at the top heck yeah now we're talking perfect at the bottom you get you got to get a um dwarf factory uh key cap that looks like an unidentified artifact there you go they'll do it i i actually like specifically got some dwarf factory keycaps specifically for my numpad just to give it some cud vibes because they did a range of a range of like really cool like cyber uh whales and cyber squid and turtles and stuff i was like this is it's got caves of cut all over it yeah um, i mean there's a, like there's there's a lot we can do what we're <laughs> gonna do i have no idea heck yeah i won't rest until caves of cut is a fashion statement caves of cut brand hookah yeah and uh i mean as a joke here um uh what, what would you be what would be your dream celebrity endorsement for uh caves of cut on 1.0 Ta taco bell Taco Bell. Oh no, that's so good. Get, get this. I know. I've free... thought about this. No, Taco <laughs> Taco Bell branded like a like a like a Taco Suprema. Yeah. Train it. Yeah. With um you... officially sanctioned herb berries. Yes. They're just, they're just nuggets. That's right. Fine wafers, <laughs> which are green, green chips. It's a salad. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Oh, that's no, that's really good. Um, I I love that. Uh, I I'm guess a, I'm a I'm a I'm a famous Taco Bell fan amongst my eight friends and family. So I mean that that really um so is is uh, in your opinion it, are they the official uh, victory restaurant and demolition man? Uh, yeah, I mean obviously. Because canonically, that's, there's three of is them. Is that even? No. Yeah. It's Taco Bell. No, that's well, the. <laughs> they had to change Sorry. it like three or four times because they kept losing the license. I know, but like the it's original. It's still Taco and Bell. True one is Taco Bell. I think everyone knows that. That's the that's the true deep lore. All right. So yeah, um, Cud Caves of Cud Universe is post Demolition Man, and it is in fact the after the Taco Bell. Victory. Taco Bell, if you're listening, I'm completely serious. Okay. <laughs> so, give me a call. Fantastic. And uh, Door Factory, I'm open to sponsorship. So, there you go. Um, <laughs> so, I, I have... Uh, this is the last question. I wasn't expecting to get to it this quickly. But, finally, uh, if there is one tip you would give new players of code, what would it be? 
One tip. Start with the... In most video games, you start with the most complicated character you can if you're an experienced gamer or even like not that experienced a gamer you'll play like a wild wizard just so the game's interesting because the world is often very understandable on purpose it's a it's a very tolkien derived fantasy setting or it's a it's like a modern war setting and so you have to play a complicated character in order for the set like the whole game to be interesting in caves of cud the setting is is not normal you're going to have a heck of a time acclimating to the setting. That's intentional. It's going to be fun to unpack. It's going to be fun to learn because it's so new. But if you put a complicated character on top of that initial experience, the game will be completely boggling. And so <laughs> I, for most people, I think what you want to do is play a very standard kind of bruiser. So you take the complexity of your character off your shoulders and can spend time understanding the world at first. And then once you've got your feet in the world, then you can ramp up to the completely nuts characters. You can, of course, do both if you want, but you're you're going to have a heck of a time. It's going to be very, very disorienting if you, if you are not oriented yet to the world and also not oriented to your character. You're, you are just going to get annihilated immediately. That, that is what I would say to someone. I think that that's just honestly good advice for cut in general. I I think that like it took me a long time to figure out that like um you like being more of a kitchen sink, sink character is just adding more stuff for you to mess up, you know, like you get a couple of things right and you know really really get them as as uh, buffed as possible, get them strong. Like most, whether it's mutations or like just like your build. Yeah, Keep most simple. games give you give you orientation and they give you a world that's designed to be oriented too quickly because they want people to buy their game and play it. And Caves of God doesn't do that, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so that's a, it. It means it's a fairly unique experience in games. You're going to get something you don't usually because we're doing something that is not really market sensitive or giving you a world that's very hard to orient to um, but is built to be rewarding to orient to so as you orient to it you'll get a feeling of mastery you'll uncover some things about the world that are interesting you'll be able to survive an extra you know 15 minutes in your game to the next level of the dungeon um, you'll discover some interesting characters you'll get to read some interesting texts right like all these things are built so that you're rewarded for orienting to it but you will not start that way. You will start very, very disoriented in, in, in this world because it's built to be a world that is not oriented in the same way as any other video game. It, it's certainly a far cry from something like a Bethesda game where it's like you, you are expected to literally max out like every skill tree in a single playthrough. That's uh, right. Somehow. And there's... And there's nothing wrong with those games. I, no, I have yeah. played I have played 25,000 hours of every Bethesda game. And, <laughs> and I love those games, and Caves of Cut is not one of them. We 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 built something that is different on purpose, um, is not supposed to be hostile, but it is disorienting, right? Like we're not against you as a player. We want to welcome you in. We want to we want you to die over and over, but have fun and be a little rewarded every time you're dying. Um, it is it is it is a welcoming sort of hostile. It's a welcoming hostility. That's uh, that's such a good way to to uh, kind of end this whole thing on. I think Caves of Cut is a welcoming hostility. I love that. All right. Um. Well, that's pretty much gonna do it. I I, I would welcome any uh, other thoughts or even like an extra tip if you want. But um, I I've, I've really enjoyed and appreciated all of this. This has been yeah, I've had a lot awesome. of fun. Glad Fantastic. I was able to like get some time for you. Fantastic. Well, uh, that's gonna do it for this. And see, so yeah, my 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 play was absolutely abysmal. Um, I think I died more times in this session campaign than in any previously. So uh, there's that. That's pretty good. Um, with my favorite build too. So like that's that's just fantastic. <laughs> that's just how, that just has how cut cutting rolls it's it's it will welcome you back next time though sometimes though it was hostile to you this sometimes could just just be like that you know like 
it, it is a welcoming hostility. <laughs> um if you have enjoyed this uh, then definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing and all of that stuff and uh see you guys next time yeah thanks so much for having me cool